Welcome back, everyone. So NASA, if you've been watching, is launching a new chapter in space exploration with the Artemis One mission. So the mission is the first phase of a brand new program called Artemis, which will pave the way for humans to go to the moon and beyond. There is so much we do not understand. So Najud Morancy, who's the chief exploration mission planning officer, joins me now to talk about this historic mission. You know, this is so exciting, you know, especially for NASA launching this historic mission next week. So tell us more about it. So absolutely. I'm happy to be here next week on Monday morning. We plan to launch the Space Launch System rocket and Orion spacecraft. Uh, we're spending a 42 day mission. Uh, it's going to go out to a distant retrograde orbit. And really the purpose is it's our uncrewed test flight of all the systems. A mega moon rocket. All right. You know, I, I think there's so much going on now with the private enterprise to get to space that sometimes it does get a little confusing. But, you know, NASA, certainly I grew up here in Florida, have watched missions, you know, when I was a little girl. I remember the Challenger explosion. You know, Artemis is the first in an entirely new set of missions for NASA. So how will it get us ready to send humans back to the moon and on to Mars? Yeah, so this is being the uncrewed test flight. This is checking out the vehicle so that on Artemis 2, we can put crew on the vehicle. So this is going to happen very soon where we start sending humans to the moon. And then by Artemis 3, we uh, intend to work with our partners, the human landing system, which is currently uh, selected SpaceX's starship as the lander. Um, and we intend to land the first woman and person of color on that mission on the moon as we return uh, to human exploration. Oh, wow. Let me ask, because, you know, we see so many just civilians going up in some of these aircrafts. So these are truly people who are preparing for this for years and years. These are astronauts, um, highly qualified people who have a big job to do. Absolutely. So these are our NASA astronauts and in some cases will be from our international partners, where we already have agreements for some of the international partners like our Canadian Space Agency and the European Space Agency will have seats on those future missions. So these are our um, dedicated astronaut corps, the same types of crew that we're currently flying on the space station. Right. Um, you know, a lot of us remember the Apollo program. How is this different? So Apollo was really a get to the moon um, flags and footprints and, and sort of a national imperative, we're really returning to exploration. And in particular, we're trying to reach the South Pole, which is actually a harder location on the moon to reach. We need more performance in our rockets and spacecraft as a result. But we're really intending to build it out as a sustainable exploration so that our missions can get longer and longer in the future. You know, the I longest think, Apollo... Go ahead. Oh, you know, you, you go, you go. <laughs> I was going to say the longest Apollo mission was three days on the surface. We're going to do six and a half on our first wow. flight to the surface and then it go get even longer from there. Wow. You know, we we're just showing some great video. I mean, if you think about what this looked like 20 years ago, uh, you just didn't have the images. You know, you, you we are seeing things like we have never seen before. Yeah, so the simulations, our graphics are really great to help explain the mission up front. But once we actually launch it, I can't wait for some of the footage coming back. Orion and the Space Launch System are outfitted with cameras, high definition in places that Apollo could have only dreamed of. So we're going to have some fantastic footage coming home. I imagine that's one of the things you're excited about. Anything else that you just cannot wait to see or be a part of? I, I mean, just seeing it launch. Yeah. We've been working on this a long time and seeing it actually happen is amazing. Well, we'll be watching and we love it in the control room when everyone just goes wild and you all get so excited. I mean, there are people in tears. I mean, it truly shows the teamwork that it takes to make this happen and, and how important it is for us to understand and know. Um, for viewers who are interested, especially the kiddos, how can they learn more about this program? So NASA has a ton of resources on the web um, at nasa.gov or search in your favorite search engine for NASA Artemis. Um, you'll find lots of resources, whether it's media, video, or educational projects for teachers even. And we're in Jacksonville. I'm not sure if you know this, but will we be able to see much? Uh, I'm not sure the viewing. This is the largest rocket that will have launched from Cape Canaveral in, in 50 years. So um, uh, there's going to be quite a viewing range. I don't know if it extends to Jacksonville, though. All right. We'll be watching um, either way. And hopefully it'll be a nice um, clear time when it launches so we can actually see something. Fingers crossed for some good Florida weather. Yes, thank you so much. Enjoy talking with you this morning. So we want to see your watch party photos as well, no matter what you see, or maybe you're going down there to actually see it happen. So share with us. Be sure to send them on to newsforjacks.com slash snapjacks. Again, the launch is slated. It's a morning launch Monday at 8.33 a.m. We'll be on air, so we'd love to see your stuff. We'll be back after the break.